So equivalence classes called our congruent classes. Fair enough? All right. So let's go through the equivalence classes the way we know. Z is in infinitely many numbers, right? And the bracket A is a standard notation for equivalence classes. Here are congruence classes, right? So what's in the bracket A is anything that has equivalence relation with A in there, right? What is the equivalence relation? It's congruent to A, and then you collect B there. Okay? You collect all of them. That's the congruence classes. So for example, 0, what is congruent to 0? Anything that divides 0 there, right? I mean, multiples of n. And 1 is a remainder, remainder 1, and anything that has remainder n minus 1 when it's divided by n, those are called um, equivalence congruence classes. OK? So. What is do you do you see that congruence classes are subsets of integers? Is that correct? Congruence classes, as you look at it here, for example, like that, isn't that a subset of n? I mean, subset of integers, right? And that subset of integers, they have no intersection, nothing in common. All the integers belong to some of these equivalence classes, congruence classes. Correct? When that happened, what do you call that? There's a p word. That describe it. Entire integers is a separated into different subsets, right? With no intersection, with a partition. So equivalence relation gives you equivalent classes, right? It produces a partition of a given subset. These are equivalence classes and partition is almost equivalent. Also. If you happen to have a partition, that defines an equivalence relation, right? If you have an equivalence relation, that defines a partition. It's kind of the same thing. All right? So one leap you have to make at this stage is the following. And I'm doing it in the following fashion because from my experience, students sometimes have a difficulty make this transition, right? Now you're entering new abstract world out of this one. I think that's the picture in here, right? N equals three, N equals three, right? Hence you're looking at three bags. What's in that bag? Nobody knows, but Maybe zero is in there. But once you know zero is in there, you know everything else. What other thing is in there if it's zero is in there? Three is in there. Negative three is in there. Nine is in there. Thirty-three is in there, right? All the multiple of three is in there. How about here? I don't know what's in there. You pull one out. If there was two, then you know what other numbers are in there, right? Fair enough? And then and so on. So you don't know what's in there, but you understand how it's grouped into three things, right? Now, integer infinitely many is now grouped into three things, correct? So I think next thing I do, oh, here, here is the, um, now I want you to look at this bracket as if it is a bag, not knowing what's in there. And if they put A in there, that means it corresponds to the action of pulling one marble out of it and reading it. What is it? Five, and then you write down five in there. Okay, that might help you to what we are about to do with this bracket. What is this bracket? Merely just a subset, right, of integers. The other one, bracket, merely the subset of integers. Now you pull one marble out of one bag and put, place them in the bag and shuffle them out. You close your eyes. You don't know what happened. It's all identical looking bag. And then pull one out again, right? How do we know these two marbles came from the same bag? You simply subtract those two marbles, right? See if it is divisible by n, that is congruent to that, right? That's how you know it came from two bags. So if you're looking at this bracket representing a subset, another bracket representing a subset with the different numbers, they're actually the same bag if those numbers you pull out is, you know, this, the difference is divisible by n. A is congruent to mod, right? So if you're looking at here, mod 5, there are five bags, right? One bag has one in it. Put it back in there and shuffle it, and you don't know what happened. Pull another one. It was a six in there. Then you know it came from the same bag, right? Because it's divisible by five, one minus six. Question? Have all of them. That's correct. Yes. Does that make sense? Okay, good. And two and seven, 77, that makes sense? 
If you subtract, you get 75 is divisible by 5, right? So it must be the same bag. That's what it says. Yeah. Good? All right. Now, you recognize what happened with the bag. I want you to recognize as a set. The Z mod 3 is a set of equivalence classes. Does that make sense? Z mod 3 is a set of congruence classes. So how many elements are in there in the Z mod 3? Three elements. That's the leap you have to make. There are infinitely many numbers. They're put in the bag. You know, you don't know, you know, don't look at inside the bag. Just three bags. That's Z mod 3. Good? Now it's merely set, right? What they're trying to do is that they define arithmetic on these three bags. That's next leap. All right. So Z mod N in mathematical without using bags is defined like this. Z mod N is a collection of all congruence classes. How many of them are there? N of them always. Z mod 3, three of them. N. Yeah. Z mod N has N congruence classes in it. If it is Z mod 3, there are three bags. Z mod, yeah, yeah. All right. If N is equal to P, we we don't de uh, we have an extra notation f subscript p okay if p is a prime number we have a special notation for that but z mod p is acceptable notation everybody understand what you mean by z, z mod p but I'll be using f p that's also special notation what is that called finite field with p bags right what is the p elements right once you pass that bag notation bag notion. Fair enough? So Z mod N is called the set of congruence classes mod N. Or we're always going to read Z mod N. We'll never repeat this mouthful word set of congruence classes mod N. Z mod N, right? And FP, finite field with three elements, things like that. All right, let's look at Z4. How many bags? Four bags, right? And if you're lucky, you pull it out. You're lucky you got zero out of it. So Right now, oh, this bag has zero in it. That's what it means, right? This bag has one in it. This bag has two in it, right? You can't write down, oh, this bag has zero in it. This bag has uh, eight in it. That's the same bag, right? So you should write it like this. How about this one in here, F5? Five bags, right? Here, um, that this bag has five in it. That's the same bag as zero, right? Yeah. This one in here, 118. The bag has 118 in it. But that's the same bag as three. It's the same bag. Five bags. Make sense? All right. But this one's called finite field with five elements. All right. That's still set, right? What we're doing now, we're about to define five elements, right? We want to add these two bags and not like a pouring into that. We just assign it. If I add this two bag, it's going to be this bag. If I add this two bag, that's going to be that bag. If I add this two bag, that's going to be that bag. Right? I'd like to define it. The defi definition goes like this. If you want to add this two bag, pull out a marble out of it. That one there, pull out another marble out of it. Add those two numbers, right? Let's say there was a 53. And figure out which bag has 53 in it. If that one has a 53 in it, that's the definition of a sum. If I add this two bag, adding abstractly that's going to be this bag does that make sense how do you subtract from this bag to that bag pull out arbitrary marbles from there subtract the numbers and see which bag has that number in it correct multiply multiply two marble and multiply that and which bag has that in it that is the definition of um, arithmetic defined on these five bags all right do you see an issue with this definition if Andrew did that to this two bag and Keely did this two bag, that should be the same bag you're pointing, right? If I add these two bag and adding the different mean, whoever did it, it should point to the same bag, right? That is the well-defined property. But they might pull out the different marbles, right? Correct? But you have to justify it. It doesn't matter what marble you pull it out from these two bag, you'll be always end up at the same bag, right? Is called well definedness. Right? Okay. All right, here it is. 
is mathematically written like this let's write that down what we just did is written like this and sometimes difficult to see what is that the next thing they do why are they doing that is because of you have different things pulled out and you have to justify that that's the same bag right all right so here this addition is abstract addition right yeah let me just define that okay so after that discussion i hope this makes sense good this is bag you pull out marble that says a this is another bag you pull out another marble that says b you add them together find the bag that has a plus b in it and so on fair enough let's look at the next um i think i already discussed the well-defined essay here so um, they're saying this one in here that is discussing the well-definedness and you have to um i think you all understood what we mean by well-defined so here for example I pulled out that bag in here. It was three. Three was in it. Mod five situation. And there's another bag. Two was in it. What is the definition of this addition of these two things? Bag with a five in it, right? That's the same bag as zero in it, correct? But different person did I pull out 18. That was the same bag. That has three in it, correct? That's three in the same bag. Negative eight, that's the same bag as two. If I add this two, what do you get? Positive 10, right? But the bag has a positive 10, and that's the same bag as a zero in there, right? So with this example, we verify that it's well defined for that particular instance, right? Here down there is saying if you have just two different things pulled out from same bag, two different things pulled out of the same bag, you add it to different occasion, you have to show why they're equal to each other. Right? In generality like this, if you can show that, oh, they're the same bag, they're the same bag, they're the same bag, and then we prove this well-defined. Good? So they have a proof in there. It just merely uses A equals B, Q plus R, and that's it. And you manipulate it, so I'll leave it at that. So that's the lemma 3.3. They they prove that. 